Hi, hope you're having a great day. Well, today I want to talk about hormones and a couple of simple, natural uh, ways and lifestyle changes that you can make to balance your hormones. Now, number one, why are hormones so important in the human body? And why do almost one in two people have a hormonal imbalance? Let's understand because there are many of us out there who don't believe that we have a hormonal imbalance. Number one, let's understand the human body. It all comes down to understanding how this intelligent, intelligent body of yours works. Each and every one of us are built up of trillions of cells, trillions of cells. Now picture that. Each of these cells have to communicate with each other. There are chemical messengers that do this communication and they're called hormones. Your hormones are constantly communicating between trillions of cells, be it your immunity, be it your growth, be it repair, whatever is happening in the human body that includes your cells, which is practically everything, happens with hormones. Now these cells are either communicating the right way or they're communicating the wrong way. They're communicating in the right language or they're communicating in the wrong language to make it simple. Now what happens is when we have a hormonal imbalance, there is communication which is not right. Now let's take that back to real life. What happens in a relationship with anyone, be it your spouse, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your teacher, your parents, your siblings, what happens when communication is not right? You have problems, you have a lot of problems, you have a lot of emotions, you have issues when the communication is not right. The same thing happens in the human body. When there is the wrong communication happening between cells, somewhere, something in your body will be impacted. For some people, it could be the onset of a disease. For some people, it could be emotions. For some people, it could be diarrhea. For some people, it could be constipation. Innumerable things could happen to different people in different ways because everyone is different. Everyone is unique. Everyone has a different set of uh, genes and the hormones will behave differently for everyone. Testosterone, estrogen, adrenaline, thyroxine, insulin. These are just some of the examples of the various hormones that you have in the human body. And the glands that produce hormones are your adrenal glands, your thyroid gland, your pancreas. Yes, your pancreas produces insulin, which is a hormone. Then you have your testicles, you have your ovaries, you have different glands. The entire system is your endocrine system, which has the job of metabolism in the human body, controlling and regulating the entire hormonal activity in the human body. So if your endocrine system is working the right way, things fall into place. You're able to lose weight, you don't, your body doesn't hold on to weight, your skin, your hair, gut issues, fatigue, all of these things behave themselves. And if there's misbehavior, it can be easily corrected when we make little changes without having to have the dependency on a lifetime drug. Very, very few people have the, need, the dependent, need to have the dependency on, life, life, on lifetime drugs. But today what we see, in most cases which involve hormones, yes, diabetes, it, insulin is a hormone. It is produced by the pancreas, but we constantly look only at sugar levels, high sugar levels, spikes in sugar levels. We're not looking at the health of the pancreas. Why aren't my pancreas behaving the right way and producing the hormone insulin the right way? So we don't look at the root cause and that's why it's not getting better. Where most type 2 diabetes is completely reversible because it's caused by lifestyle and environmental factors. And it can be reversed. Likewise with thyroid, again, we're just looking at the thyroid gland, we're looking at TSH, we're looking at T3 and we're looking at T4. We're not looking at why is in my thyroid gland producing the hormone thyroxine which is actually connected even to your liver and deficiencies of certain vitamins, minerals and fatty acids in the human body because we don't look at the root cause, we look at a symptomatic approach which is good for us for a while. But the problem is what, what's currently being used are things like birth control, hormone replacement, then you have thyroxine in the form of your synthetic thyroid medication, you have insulin injections. Like I said, many people may need this, but the problem with this is, this is usually prescribed as a lifetime kind of a drug, so anything that's synthetic that constantly goes in your body will have side effects. The second thing it does is it masks your root cause. So if, you're, if, for example, someone's thyroid gland is not producing thyroxine because there's a deficiency, only because we're taking a lifetime drug, we fail to get to the root cause of that deficiency, which if corrected can reverse the thyroid problem. But over time, because it's only masking the symptom, we have more problems in the human body because that deficiency grows more and more. So the idea is getting to the root cause of the disease. So what are some of the signs of having a hormonal imbalance? 
almost everything because like I said that communication is either right or wrong from your hair fall to the inability to lose weight to the sudden gain of weight to a low sex drive low libido then you have depression and anxiety because yes your gut is directly connected to your emotions depression anxiety because a lot of regulation of hormones happens in your gut so if you have the right gut health you know, a lot of problems when it comes to depression, anxiety, and emotional issues can be solved rather than just having a dependency on medication all the time. I'm not against medication. I'm against the fact that we're only looking at symptoms and not looking at the root cause. Medicine is great to use as a crutch to make us feel better, but also reevaluate our lifestyle and address the root cause and get to the root cause of what's causing it. Then we have constant fatigue. People are constantly fatigued and they think they need more coffee, they need more tea, they need more stimulants, they need more Red Bull, but all they need is to balance out their hormones. And then you have digestive issues. And again, a classic example is an ER positive breast cancer case. ER positive is estrogen dominance. Estrogen is a hormone. You can do breast surgeries, you can do chemo, you can do radiation, you can block your body with hormone blockers. But if you don't get to the root cause of why do I have a hormonal balance, imbalance? Why is my body producing more estrogen. The root cause, if you truly want to heal, is finding out why your body is misbehaving. Take all the conventional treatments, but it is your responsibility to work and get to the root cause and address the root cause if you don't want to constantly fall sick or be dependent on medication for a lifetime. Let's get straight into the solution. Okay, it comes down to lifestyle. You see, when you create a good environment at home, when you create a good environment in your country, in your village, in your community, everything flourishes, everything thrives. The same thing in the human body. When you create the right environment in the human body, your cells begin to behave, your hormones begin to behave. Things work in harmony with nature. We are products of nature. So the first thing is overeating and undereating. If you're overeating, you're creating a hormonal imbalance because your hormones are also connected with your digestion of food, assimilation of food, insulin produced by the pancreas, then you have your thyroxine, then you have digestive enzymes that are again produced by your, by your pancreas, and you have bile, and you have a whole load of enzymes that have the responsibility of breaking down carbohydrates, fats, and proteins in the human body. All of these need the right environment to work. When we overeat, we create an imbalance. It's common sense. The same thing happens when we undereat. So people doing all these stupid fad diets that deprive them of the key vitamins, minerals, and macronutrients that the human body requires, the body goes into stress mode. What's the hormone it produces? The adrenal glands start producing cortisol. Cortisol goes up, something has to come down. It could be tyroxine, DHEA, testosterone, which is then interconnected with your fatigue and your cravings and everything. Leptin and ghrelin, which are hormones again. You see, man, we think we're more we, th we think we're smarter than the human body and we think there's a pill that will fix this and a pill that will fix that. I'm sorry. If a pill fixed everything, we wouldn't have the kind of suffering and disease that we have today. So under eating and over eating, that's the first lifestyle change that you need to make when it comes to your hormonal balance. So when you're trying to starve yourself because you overate last night, doesn't make sense. You're putting the body into a hormonal imbalance. The next thing is over exercising and under exercising again. When you overexercise, no matter what you do, athletes are different, bodybuilders are different because when they overexercise, they increase their rest and their recovery. They increase their protein and their supplements and their recovery supplements and all of that stuff. You are not an athlete, you are not a bodybuilder. Most of us are laymen. So overexercising, again, will raise certain levels of your hormones and decrease certain levels of your hormones. That is an imbalance and it will produce all the problems that we spoke about if it's not done the right way. And then you have sleep, which is the most important function when it comes to balancing your hormones. There's a reason why we need to sleep. That is your true meditation. When you sleep, your hormones balance. Your cells repair, they regenerate, they grow. There are new enzymes that are regenerated in the human body. There is magic that happens while you sleep. But today we think that we can compromise our sleep. We think there are ways and shortcuts to interfere with nature. And that's why we have so many problems. 
so many problems. By cutting down our sleep, we interfere with the production of melatonin. Melatonin is so important to immunity, to people who have cancer, to the growth and development of children and adults alike, your brain function, your cell regeneration. But you see, all of this becomes a hormonal imbalance because we compromise what nature has induced in us, which is a good night of sleep. So we got to work on our sleep, we got to work on our movement, we got to work on our nutrition in a balanced way and the way that we eat. It's not just about the quality of food all the time. People are eating pumpkin seeds and chewing on sunflower seeds and eating organic salads and quinoa and all the superfoods and all of that stuff, but they still have a hormonal imbalance because it's not just the food that's going to fix you. It is your balance, your, it is your hormonal imbalance that first has to be corrected so that your body can assimilate, absorb and use the food that you're eating then the quality of your food makes a big, big difference. When you have a hormonal imbalance, you can use something called adaptogens. Adaptogens are things, examples like ashwagandha. We spoke about tulsi, the power of, of holy basil, which is an adaptogen. These work at a cellular level to reduce anxiety, to reduce stress at a cellular level. The right amount of vitamin D in your body regu regulates your hormonal balance. Again, it is so important. There's a direct link between vitamin D and your hormonal balance. And most people have extremely low levels of vitamin D, which means they have a hormonal imbalance, which means they can have any one of the symptoms or many of the symptoms that we just discussed. And then you look at your gut health. Most people are poor gut health, so you may need prebiotics, you may need probiotics. You don't have to take supplements, you can get this from natural foods and we've spoken about this over and over again. You have the right gut health, you enable your body to regulate hormones the right way. It's all about management, regulation and balance of your hormones in the human body. That's all you need to do to balance your hormones. And fifth and, and, not, and uh, the most important point again is your stress levels. People have to start understanding that stress has caused most of the issues that we have in the world today. No matter how much technology we have, there's more and more stress. No matter how connected we are with our children, our loved ones, our parents, there is more and more stress. There is so much of stress that's being caused today and that is the root cause of most problems that people have. And we have to understand it again, stress is related to a hormone. A, a, a small amount of stress is great for us, it motivates us, it makes us do the things that we need to do, it encourages and empowers us to build companies and businesses and be our best. That's great, but the problem is chronic stress. The more stress you have, the more cortisol you keep raised up in your body. The higher elevation of cortisol you have, your DHEO, your testosterone, your estrogen, all of these hormones are impacted, which means you have a hormonal imbalance. That is the impact of stress on your body. So whether it's prayer for you, whether it's meditation, whether it's exercise, whether it's mastering the skill of accepting and letting go, whether it's boosting up your self-esteem, whether it's measuring your self-worth and defining your own self-worth rather than having your boss or your, your, your the community or your colleagues and friends defining your own self-worth. All of these play a role in you managing who you are, your presence, your stress levels. There is no shortcut when it comes to hormones. Like I said, they'll throw in a birth control pill, they'll block your estrogen, they'll put you on hormone therapy, they'll put you on insulin and, and thyroid medication. It, if you need it, take it. But my point is, why? What is the root cause? Get down, put in some effort, own responsibility and accountability for your own health and life because I'll tell you something, that no one else cares about that. No one else cares. So it's high time that you realize that it is your life, your health and your responsibility and no matter how fancy the offer is, no one cares about your health but you. So you do the right things for yourself. You get to the root cause. You use all the help that you need to. There's a problem in your body. Why? I want to know why there's a problem in my body. If you run a business and there's a problem in your business, do you want a, do you, do you want a temporary fix or do you want to get to the root cause and find out what is messing up my business? So we got to take the same analogy and apply it to our health, but we don't do that because we take our life and health for granted. We will wake up again tomorrow and again and again. And then we have this promise of a quick fix and instant gratification. And that's all the human mind today has become so shallow. All we look is for quick gratification and a quick fix because we want to go on leading the shallow life that we're involved in. Go deeper than that. It takes effort. It will require you to meditate. It will require you to find your spiritual path. It will require you to make decisions that may make you lose some of your friends, the wrong ones mostly. It will require you to cut away from toxic people and toxic relationships. That's when you start evolving spiritually and holistically. And that's when you have control of your health and your disease. 
Have a great evening, everyone. Have a great weekend. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.